side we already talked about the fact that the chairman pcb uh, means business and this time uh, he's met the players and he's uh, you know put it very categorically that the contract of players will be improved further so that was i think a good omen and the team will be selected on merit so i think it was really critical for everybody to know how things are going to be working in the pcb and like i said that they've been streamlined right now so i think this is the first interaction uh, with the new chairman pcb mr mohsin nafi that he had with the players and rightly so as well and i think that uh, uh, it, it it brings out a lot of positivity uh, out of the Pakistan cricket board. So we'll talk about that in detail. Uh, all the players were there uh, who are part of the PCB structure. So we'll talk about this in detail. Then, of course, we may move on to the Pakistan-New Zealand series that uh, is set to happen. And uh, for that, we've got a security delegation that is, uh, you know, set to uh, look after things as well. Now, it's very important to discuss this perspective because when you talk about the venues and you talk about everything that is in between a five-match G20 series in Lahore and Rawalpindi, so the delegation of course has arrived in Pakistan they will be taking uh, care of all the things looking after various arrangements security as well as the routes everything that is in plan and phased as well and I'm sure that the Pakistan cricket board has put everything up to the mark and we're going to have uh, a series without any hindrance so we'll talk about that in detail then of course we move on to Sri Lanka versus Bangladesh the T20 international series where Bangladesh have been beaten by Sri Lanka by three runs Charitha Sri Lanka has been declared player of the match Sri Lanka now lead the three match series uh, one nil and of course uh, we talk about a cricket team uh, Little Lions who has visited Pakistan they appreciated the security arrangements of uh, Pakistan army as well and I think it's a good omen that sends out a positive message as well and cricket continues in Pakistan without any hindrance and then of course we move on to the Asian Champions League the first match of the quarterfinal stage Al N have beaten Al Nasser by 1-0 Al Hilal and Al Ittihad will be competing in the second quarterfinal as well so we'll talk about football and then of course we move on and discuss NBA with a new record for points in American basketball has been made. LeBron James now becomes the first player to reach 40,000 points in NBA history. So we'll talk about that in detail as well. Time now to introduce our guests. First of all, in studios, we've been joined by cricket commentator, international <coughs> broadcaster, presenter, and our sports expert, Kiasif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. I'm perfect. How about yourself? I'm very well, sir. We've also been joined by sports expert, Ali Mehdi. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Ali? Welcome, Thank you very much. Great to have you gentlemen on the show as well. And like I said, that we'll discuss things in detail as well. We've also been joined by senior sports journalist Sayyid Haider. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? All right. We'll just try to get Sir Haider back. Uh, having some technical difficulties. Right. Asif, uh, Chairman Pakistan Cricket Board, Mohsin Nakwi, had a meeting with the Pakistani cricket players who are part <coughs> of the PCB structure. Like I said, that this is the first official meeting after he's taken charge as Chairman PCB. And a lot of positivity has come out. And I think a lot of pertinent statements have been made in this meeting. Well, really, really important. And everyone wants uh, merit in Pakistan, especially when we talk about the selection. And this, the only criteria was uh, in the past, that was the franchise cricket. But uh, the franchise cricket is going on in Pakistan. And uh, Mohsin Nikvi met with the players and has addressed with the, all the players that were sitting in front of him. And of course, the only thing that was to bring some confidence and give some confidence to the players that if you are performing well, if you're coming up with the good performances, that is the only merit for the selection in the nat national side. But uh, w what was happening in the past, uh, we have seen that the, the different chairman, they met the Pakistan team on the different and the various times. But the outcome wasn't anything special. But this time we were hoping best, as you said in your intro, that uh, um, when Mohsin Nakwi is there, that, that it means that the business, of course, and professionalism. Um, he served Punjab uh, when he was the CM, uh, acting CM for the uh, Punjab. But after that, right after that, when he has taken the charge as the Pakistan Cricket Board, the chairman Pakistan Cricket Board, now I think that the, all the responsibility and everyone wants him to take some harsh decisions, some good decisions, and some solid decisions for the betterment of, of the cricket. So that's the first step, and we're hoping for the more. Certainly. Uh, joining us is senior sports journalist Sayyid Haider. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Hi, how are you? Sir, great to have you on the show. I'm very well as well. Sir, how do you see uh, 
the outcome of this meeting with the chairman PCB Mohsin Nakvi and the players this is the first official meeting that took place and as we were discussing that something very particular uh, you know has come out of this meeting and we can expect a lot of positivity now. Uh, exactly, it was not mandatory meeting, uh, but I, as we know that Mohsin Nakvi is like a person who is uh, uh, wants to go in the public and uh, discuss the matters uh, directly with the concerned people, and our players de definitely they are the direct uh, uh, people of the cricket board. And uh, if Mohsin Nakvi is making some chat with the PCB uh, players, then it means that he wants to get something. Uh, with concrete results, because in the last one year we have seen ad hoc basis the PCB has been run, and uh, the outcome of the ad hoc basis you have seen that uh, we have lost the matches in the World Cup and the series, bilateral series and everything, because the players they were not in confidence that that board is working on the uh, permanent basis. Now Mosinakvi is doing uh, exactly. He is getting also uh, the problems of the players that uh, definitely the players have problems. But in the past, we have seen that the chairman of the board and the players, they did not have good connection and players could not make uh, the complaint or something. And we have seen also very pathetic things that uh, the chat between the uh, CEO to the barbarism has been revealed. And many things uh, have been come out from the board, which should not be. Now, Mosinekvi is doing in the right manner, right direction that the players should be in contact with the PCB chairman and directly the everything should be should go to the PCB chairman. And I am sure that Mohsin uh, as he has started uh, right now, uh, he will get the results exactly as he has, he has done in the uh, Punjab CM caretaker government. Certainly. Uh, Ali Mehdi, it's important that, you know, we gauge a bit of the past as well. Uh, there have been meetings, as Asif also mentioned, between the players and the chairman, but they've been separate meetings. It's the first collective meeting that we've seen in a while now by any chairman. But I think uh, particular statements, first of all, I think uh, telling the players that their contracts will be improved gives them a lot of security as well at the same time. And then, of course, you've got to talk about meritocracy because that has been a big challenge for Pakistan Cricket Board. The most important thing is that uh, Ahmed, after a long time, you have a chairman who's been elected to the elected and mm -hmm. a PCB chairman and has been given a mandate for about three years over here. I believe three years. So the thing is that that's the most important thing. The other thing is, like you just mentioned, you know, uh, you know everything going on meritocracy. It's very very important that you mm -hmm. have a, uh, the, a mm -hmm. proper merit system. Well, well, but you mentioned a very important point. I think Ali Mehdi mentions a very very yeah. important point that this is the first elected yeah. chairman that we've had in a while. Now, if you consider some of the dynamics of PCB in the last two tenures that we've got, we've only had uh, heads of cricket committees and we've not had, you know, a properly elected chairman who can look after matters as well. And when you give a mandate for three years, I think that further, uh, you know, requires things that, uh, uh, you know, have a lot of consistency in them. So any policy decision that is taken would have consistency in there as well. Uh, for the tenure that Mr. Nakvi has, he'll have that uh, support that he can implement those decisions. So that's very important, Ali Mehdi. No, it's extremely important over here. And the fact that, you know, you have uh, Mohsin Nakvi who keep, means business over here. He's just taken over, you know, he's, you know, he was obviously Punjab's uh, caretaker CM before that. And now he's come over and he's taken over as a uh, PCB chairman. Look, this is his first role that as a PCB chairman and the most important that he's been given a mandate of three years over here and, and as an elected chairman too. So w whilst he's been given that, you know, he's taken this opportunity opportunity to see the dynamics of how PCB works. He's obviously seen the results of what's been happening with the previous chairmen and uh, comm uh, you know, board of committee you know, chairmen over the past uh, three years too. And the most important thing for Pakistan cricket is that you need continuity over here. Now, Mohsin Nakvi is that sort of person that, you know, he really, really highlights the um, um, merit system over here. And he said this in, you know, today at the Islamabad Serena Hotel, you know, addressing all the players uh, collectively over here that, look, you know, our most important thing is that we want to look promote uh, merit over here you're obviously open to me you can come and meet me anytime and it's very important because look you know what happens behind closed doors this uh, this uh, you could say this system of meeting players individually it harms us a lot Ahmed. everything should not be behind behind closed doors it should happen in an open uh, gallery and an open forum and the fact that all these players you know, were actually in an open forum is a, is a very good sign. It shows that there will be transparency in dialogue and a communication between uh, the PCB chairman and players. Because if you see over the past two, three years, especially if you go back, you know, with this predecessor, 
there wasn't any communication between the players and the uh, and the PCB uh, committee chairman. For, and for that reason, there were lots of problems. And then the confidence was lost between both sides too. And it's so important to have open dialogue. And I think that he started off extremely well. He knows that it's going to be a tough task. But at the same time, whilst there's transparency, he's also said that improved contracts. And this is what gives confidence to these players. Because if you improve their contracts, then obviously the national team will come first. And something which Asif Bhai keeps on highlighting is domestic cricket. He highlights it every day. He talks about domestic cricket being so extremely important. And if you give them good contracts, obviously for them domestic cricket will come first, whether it be the Kaidi Azam Trophy, the National T20 and the 50 over format too. You know, they're going to give that importance. And then at the same time too, you know, they'll consider that to franchise but cricket. I, I, I would respectfully disagree to one particular point where I think that uh, only putting financial incentives in domestic cricket won't cut it. B base, you know, uh, if you base your selection upon that domestic cricket, I think that's where players yeah. would eventually focus on domestic cricket. No, I completely agree over there. Yeah. Look, uh, when we talk about, we're talking about the contract basis, you know. You're talking for the contract, you know, central contracts are for like uh, the top uh, echelon of players, mm -hmm. the top cream of players, ABC. Why not have contracts for lower, you know, uh, players too, you know, who have not made that top cream or, you know, that creme de la creme, as they say, you know, ABC for that matter. You need to have a proper system where all players are given certain sort of contracts. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, you have a central uh, contracts, but the other players also should have some financial backing so that they can come and, you know, go, uh, right. perform well in domestic mm -hmm. cricket too. And they can obviously leave their livelihoods. Absolutely. Uh, Asif, uh, if I may, I have a, mm -hmm. a particular question I'd like you to address. And uh, I think uh, in detail, if you can digress upon it as well, the fact is that why in the year 2024 is there a need for a chairman to say that, you know, uh, selection will be based on merit. That basically highlights the failure of the previous system as well, if I'm not wrong. Well, very straightforward. There's the answer is yes. And action speaks louder than words. Uh, he is addressing and he is announcing this statement that will definitely go with the merit. But let's see what happens in the future. We're hoping good and we're hoping that uh, Mohsen Akhwi will bring some uh, uh, merit in the system. But the thing is, that what was happening in the past, uh, of course, as uh, we have discussed a lot, that the, we were not giving respect to the domestic performers. And that's why we're choosing players from the different leagues, from the different franchises. Um, either it's T20, and it, it happened in the test cricket as well, which was uh, a mockery with the Pakistan cricket, to be very honest. The second thing is that uh, uh, why he's announcing this. Because uh, if you see that when, let me take the name. Let's, let's open this Pandora box. What happened? When Imam ul Haq played, when uh, his uncle was the chief selector of Pakistan Cricket Board, why it happened that, and uh, let me take some more names, why Azam Khan is playing in the side? Because his father is a former test cricketer, and uh, his father is the head coach uh, for, a, for a franchise team as well. So I think these kind of uh, examples will never bring the merit in the uh, national side. And that's why he has said clearly, the chairman Pakistan Cricket Board, that now enough is enough and we'll go with the merit. Absolutely. I think that simple as that. Uh, but Sir Heather, I think one of the key challenges that if you remember, we highlighted initially when Mr. Mohsin Nakhvi was elected as chairman, we said that infrastructure development, reforming the uh, structure of cricket in Pakistan, particularly if you want to reform domestic cricket, you've got to give it importance. Ali Mehdi mentioned a very important point that you've got to make it financially viable for players to focus on it as well. But then, like I said, that you need to base your selection policy yeah. on the basis of those domestic performances in order to identify to the players that your domestic cricket and cricket for Pakistan should be your prime responsibility. Exactly, uh, it's true. Uh, but first, I want back to what about the infrastructure in Pakistan. You are uh, saying that uh, infrastructure will be developed or will be uh, more, more better in the future. But I would say that there is no infrastructure available in Pakistan. If you say this infrastructure, which is which is running right now in the Pakistan, it is not an infrastructure. It is just an opportunity for the players to get something cricket, some cricket in uh, in our system. Otherwise, you can see that it's an infrastructure. Infrastructure means that you have to get something in your small cities and uh, as well as in the big cities, some cricket academies, good grounds there, the players can play. In Karachi, I would say one word for the Karachi. In Karachi, there are only the four or five good grounds, and the one day the rent of the ground is over 60, 70,000 rupees. How the a club can go there and they can play? 
it's impossible because you have not met the grounds everywhere. If you see in India or in uh, uh, Australia, England or everywhere, a lot of the grounds on the club level are available, the, the teams that can play there and uh, they, sh they should be member of the association and then they have right to play there. But in Pakistan, the associations, they are not working, the regional as associations, they are not working. Now, department, department of cricket has been started, but I, was, I would say they, have, they don't have any structure still. They have met a team on the emer emergency basis. They have met a team for the President Cup and then finish. There is no cricket in the domestic system. Uh, if Mohsen Akhvi want a trans transparency in the selection, in the system, then he has to start from the lower level. The domestic cricket, I have, say, I have said always that if you will not give concern to your domestic cricket, you can never get the international players. These players, what you have got in your inter in, in Pakistan national team, they are not from your domestic system. They are, uh, uh, unfortunately, they are from the franchises or from the uh, other county teams or other uh, for, uh, foreign teams. Otherwise, in Pakistan domestic structure, you are not getting the right players. And what we have seen in the last one year that, as uh, Ali Mehdi said, and Asif said also that uh, the transparency in the selection of the team is not available. We have we have not selected the right players for the World Cup in India. Shan Masood, I would say, he was the best opener for the Indian pitches, but we have not selected. And we have selected someone, they cannot perform. So transparency means that you have to get right person at the right place. This should be done. Otherwise, you will not. You cannot get a remedy of your problems. Absolutely, I, I like this terminology, right, Ali? Maybe you know, in case of emergency, break glass. In, in case of emergency, select me. So you've got emergency players now available in Pakistan. Yeah, you've got emergency players in Pakistan, and then accordingly, only when you know, your <laughs> back is stuck to the wall, then you actually select them. And look, it's ridiculous. But the thing is that now that we have a chairman who's been selected, and a chairman who actually means, you know, he's been very open to this forum over here. I genuinely think he's going to go on merit, and we're not going to be, it's not, whenever a sort of selection is going to happen, it isn't going to be controversial. I genuinely feel that most of the time, obviously, we don't. Not everybody agrees to, you know, for towards selection. But I think most of the time he'll have a proper system in place. Uh, Wahab Riaz, who is actually uh, the head chairman of selectors, who worked with uh, as sports minister under the Mohsin Nafi when he was caretaker, um, the chief minister. He has a good relationship with him too. But and now since he's uh, this chairman of the selectors, hopefully, you know, he's going to, uh, you know, select on merit too. And they have a good understanding. So because he knows some of them, and he obviously knows Wahab Riaz. I I think that's also going to make a big difference too uh, as to actually how the dynamics work in um, the PCB. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Asif, uh, can you pick some players on the basis of emergency? Is that possible? Yeah, why not? K. Asif <laughs> and, uh, then and Asif Ali. <laughs> no, no, no. K. Asif, then Ahmed Nawaz, <laughs> Ali Mahdi, Arsalan Shirazi. Mm -hmm. So we have different players, you know. Head, I mean, head, this is head coach Sir Heather. Uh, to be very yes. honest, Ahmed, what uh, Sir Heather has said. Uh, this is uh, uh, an eye opener for us being cricket lover being cricket commentator in this fraternity to be very honest that if we're not speaking uh, on this forum for the betterment of cricket then i mean it, it does not work because the people as i said earlier if you do remember that some quacks they're sitting on the tv they do not talk about the the problems of pakistan cricket they just talk about their personal uh, liking and disliking and they have nothing to do with the betterment of the cricket. You know, one so, of these days, I'm, I'm going to try to bring out graphics and a sound effect. Whenever you say quacks, we actually have quacks in, you know, being played as well. I, I'm going to have this on the show one day or another. Uh, all right. But if you see that uh, if, if everyone is, uh, you know, on the same page, this, we want betterment mm -hmm. in the Pakistan cricket. And we want to see the Pakistan cricket rising. Um, in, in an upcoming two, three years because we'll be playing Champions Trophy in Pakistan in 2025. Right before that, we'll be playing uh, T20 World Cup. Mm -hmm. So we have enough time to, you know, uh, fix things in, in, in right manner. But in the list of things to be, to be ad addressed, I think, Kasif, for me, my personal request to the PCB management or to the chairman or my personal priority would still be improve your infrastructure development in Pakistan, improve the number of stadiums, improve the capacity of stadiums, for God's sake, because, you know, it, it's just a plain joke right now. <sighs> really important. You know, I was sharing with you that I was uh, doing commentary in Kaidazan Trophy's match mm -hmm. in LCCA, and uh, five of the players 
they w they're all of the uh, uh, test cricketers. And right before the match, that they said that we aren't playing here in this ground because uh, it was uneven and the pitch wasn't okay. The, the outfield was wet, even the, it wasn't grassy. So I think that they were right. Why should they take uh, you know, uh, this kind of risk for, 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 for the betterment of uh, you know, domestic cricket? This is the du duty of Pakistan Cricket Board to do something special, as you said, that to improve the infrastructure and to make some good grounds. We have already good stadiums. Talk about Gujranwala, talk about Sialkot and Shekhupura and mm -hmm. others, you know, that... Uh, Faisalabad. Faisalabad. Mm -hmm. Still, we're working on the Arbab Nyas Peshawar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure either it has been completed or not. Still, the, the development work is going on. So it's really important, but I think now the, the newly elected chairman, uh, Mohsin Nakvi, he got the shopping list that I will <laughs> fix all these problems with the passage of time. Absolutely. Sir, Heather, uh, this infrastructure development is a very, very uh, pertinent topic right now because, you know, the world has moved on to 100,000 capacity stadiums to 140,000 plus capacity stadiums. And for us to attract cricketers, to increase the bulk of cricketers uh, or, or fans, I think it is imperative that now we move on to the traditional Karachi, Rawalpindi and Lahore stadiums. Exactly. We have to make something about uh, our stadiums. They are not in a good condition, really. I have seen uh, National Stadium Karachi. I would say that uh, it's not uh, a, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's not in a stadium for the international cricket. There is no facilities are available. You can enhance the uh, capacity, but uh, you don't need to make, uh, you should not enhance the capacity of this national stadium. You have to make more stadiums. It would be better. If you see in Mumbai, they have made two stadiums. They are available for the international cricket. In Jaipur, in uh, other cities in India, they have made two or three stadiums. More stadiums means that you are getting more cricket. And international cricket is not available for a whole day. Inter in, in international cricket, some, some, someone only available in there. But domestic cricket, it should be. It should run whole day and it should be in the good stadiums. The players, the spectators, the, the viewers, they should come and they should, they should see how the players are playing. And we have to make some facilities. I have seen the National Stadium Karachi. Really, it's it's not uh, possible for um, for a person to go normally in the stadium and sit there if the facilities are not, are not available. And uh, uh, other stadiums, I don't know in the Rawalpindi or, or, or Lahore, but Karachi is not a, in condition. Uh, stadiums means that you are getting good cricket. It is all over the world. The cricketing nations, they have they have met good stadiums by which they are getting good cricket good cricketers and it is always necessary for your systems it sh it shows that how you are concerned about your infrastructure it is always a picture and i hope that mostly like the visionary person he has done a lot of things in in punjab in caretaker government i am really am sure that he will do something new and something different in the pcb what we have missed in the last one year absolutely ali Mehdi, your two cents uh, on infrastructure development in pakistan increasing the capacity uh, updating existing infrastructure and maybe if you've got the right funds and authority make new ones as well. No, I think this is a very good point you've actually uh, mm -hmm. uh, pointed out over here and they really wanted to actually stress on this. I was actually reading and I've been f uh, reading on this for a long, long time mm -hmm. that you know the stadiums which you currently have in place, should it be Gaddafi Stadium, Rawal Pindi Cricket Stadium and uh, National Bank Arena Karachi. You know, you have to increase the capacity because, you know, if you want to compete at the highest level, if you want ICC events, if you want uh, Asian, uh, this, you want uh, this Asian, Asia Cups in Pakistan, any, and other uh, big, you know, big teams to visit Pakistan, you have, there has to be infrastructure development. Obviously, with, uh, you know, infrastructure, uh, uh, infrastructure at the bottom level too and at grassroots, but the most important is to attract the big teams over here. And how does that happen? You have to, these big, uh, you know, these mm -hmm. uh, four mentioned uh, the stadiums have to be uh, capacity has to be increased and it has to be refurbished you talk about uh, a Gaddafi stadium Gaddafi stadium is in a bad state it's dilapidated you know you talk about uh, the, the roof over there it has uh, this rust over there so you know they really need to do an overhaul for that and I think for the ch I was reading somewhere that for the upcoming champions trophy which will be taking place in about one year's time they are going to actually increase the capacity at Gaddafi stadium Lahore at National Bank 
Ishan Karina and Rawal Pindi Cricket Stadium. Well, I, I hope so and I, God knows how they're going to do it but I hope they do. But I think it's very important, not just the existing infrastructures yeah. but improving the quality of grounds is very important. We only talk about pitches in Pakistan and it breaks my heart that we don't talk about what fans should deserve as well because they're the most essential part of Pakistan cricket. So obviously I'm sure that a lot of positivity is going to come out as far as the administrative affairs are concerned at PCB. Now we shift our focus to the security delegation of New Zealand cricket that has visited Pakistan. It's arrived in Pakistan and this is of course leading up to uh, the T20 international series between Pakistan and New Zealand. Five T20s to be played in Lahore and uh, Rawalpindi. Asif, what would you like to add? Well, uh, September 2021, that was the uh, you know black day in Pakistan cricket when the New Zealand uh, black cap, they went back. They didn't play in Pakistan. What happened that they got an email and uh, uh, someone was threatening and they got uh, a serious threat and uh, the president of the prime minister of the New Zealand they have decided that we aren't playing in Pakistan we're going back I think that was the time when our nation stood together and we back to our institutions either it's army either it's uh, uh, our uh, other uh, security forces and the government yes we are here to protect our country and uh, uh, congratulations to Pakistan nation the way they stood together and now this is the time again the New Zealand security team uh, including two of them they are the member of the New Zealand cricket board one of them is the security expert and another uh, another personality that is the uh, CEO of New Zealand Players Association what, what does it mean that they they are coming with a full force to check each and everything and they will meet definitely with the government officials and the security officials they will get briefings that how it's gonna it how it will work and how the New Zealand team will get the security either in the stadium in Lahore in Rawalpindi and uh, Qaddafi Stadium in, in Rawalpindi Cricket Stadium and where the guys are staying so I think that they'll, they'll be getting an overview and I'm quite sure that we got some visual and uh, last night they visited uh, Rawal Pindi Cricket Stadium and they got an you know uh, they, 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 they met with security officials and uh, they got uh, an idea of what's happening so I, I think that uh, right now the franchise cricket is going on in Pakistan and they're getting proper security each and everything is perfect and weather is perfect so now welcome New Zealand we're waiting for you absolutely sir Heather what would you like to add because obviously this is very important uh, the visit of this delegation leading up to the five match G20 international series yeah security is always concerned uh, for the farm teams in Pakistan because in, we don't have a good uh, history in Pakistan last 10 15 years that uh, the teams they have refused to play there or they have they have come and they have, they have uh, gone back without playing an, a match a single match so uh, I think after the uh, series of Australia and New Zealand last year now we are in good condition and position that uh, we can get, uh, provide a good security to all teams and they are I think uh, they are totally satisfied from from the security of Pakistan, and uh, I would request to New Zealand cricket board. It's a good sign that you have sent us a security team, and they will examine the security situation and everything. But I will request to New Zealand board that please send your cricket team entire team. Please don't send your B grade C or D grade team as you have done always, because this tour is colliding with the IPL, and uh, I have come to know that uh, a lot of players of New Zealand team they are going to play IPL. I think. Players, as a cricketer, as a human being, they should give some preference to the national team and should go with the team. And we want to, the Pakistan nation, they are cricket lovers. They want to see a good competitive cricket and they will welcome, as they have done in the last year, uh, Australia and New Zealand team. And they will do also in the same time uh, this year. But to send a good a competitive team and Pakistan have also a good talent. And I hope that we will see a good competition in the New Zealand tour. Yes, Asif, mm -hmm. you've got something to add to that. Yes, uh, Heather, well, let's put it this way, that mm -hmm. if their key players aren't coming, Kane Williamson, Tim Sodhi, Trent Bold, uh, and other some players, if they, they aren't coming, why we uh, give rest to, why, why, why aren't we give respect, uh, uh, rest to uh, Babar Azam, Rizwan, and our key players, and we give chance to uh, some youngsters like, uh, you know, we have plenty of youngsters who are performing well in National T20. So let's put it this way, if the B team is coming from New Zealand, we'll also uh, give chances to the youngsters, isn't it? Yeah, Asif, can I, can I make some words, Ahmed? Uh, yes, unfortunately, sir. we are not. Uh, we have not done in the last years. We have seen the last year also New Zealand team. It was a B team, but our 
A team was playing against the B team. Actually, our um, our thing is that is that to provide uh, the chances to our A team players, and we have an argument that uh, it's it's a tour before the T20 World Cup, and we want to give the practice to the uh, our A team players. I think this is a, a wrong thinking, and we have to go as if said uh, exactly that. If the B team is coming, then we should give chance to our T20 uh, B, B team players or the uh, the players they don't have the opportunity to play. Uh, when the Barbara Azam and Rizwan or other players are playing. So it's a good good thing. It should be done. But unfortunately, it, it has not been done. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that because in the last last years, we have seen that chairman or the uh, PCB management or uh, Pakistan cricket team management, they are focused only to win the match, to win the series, but not giving the right opportunity to the uh, uh, our beating players or uh, uh, our standby players. So it has to be changed. But I'm not seeing anything different in the next tour. So uh, I I hope that Pakistan cricket team management they will give some some chances to our other players like uh, we are seeing uh, some someone uh, with very real good talent in this uh, in PSL and they have they have to be they have to get some chances in the Pakistan national team. Absolutely, uh, Ali Mehdi, uh, your analysis now. There's a security delegation visiting Pakistan right now. Uh, they've arrived, of course, they'll be looking at various aspects. We've got a five-match T20 international series coming up. Look, I think that the security uh, you know, personnel have come over here. And one positive sign for Pakistan is that last year, uh, you know, we also had uh, this uh, new a series against New Zealand in about uh, April, if I'm not mistaken. And that went very smoothly. So that actually will enhance their confidence. And for that reason, because over the past one and a half years, New Zealand have made two separate trips to Pakistan. They came for the test series last year. They had, a small, I think, an ODI series. And then they came again to have an ODI and a T20 series. So that obviously gives an advantage too but it's good that the security personnel have come once again they've come during the busy season uh, right now due to franchise cricket too and uh, at the same time that will give them confidence too and i don't see any reason why as to why the series shouldn't happen and you know regarding what um, asif bhai and also uh, sir heather also said i completely agree over here that we should actually play a b team over here i think it's very important because you talk about the big teams like the england's the india's and then all the australia especially england and australia what they do uh, england and India for that matter whenever you have a series you know what they do is that they've been their management of players has been very good you know as to how they are uh, this uh, their workload I mean we're talking about players Ali Mehdi you remember that at one point in the Indian team when uh, MSD was at his peak hmm. as a captain and they were they had the complete side that they wanted still on various tours we saw we I personally saw probably one of the uh, most amount of captains that were tried by any international team. Suresh Raina captaining yeah. uh, in one series, Shekhar Dhawan captaining in one Gautam series, Gambir. Gautam Gambhir captaining in one series, you know. Uh, they probably tried five to six skippers in different series. And and then also they've continued with that uh, mm -hmm. uh, trajectory. They've done it over the uh, over the past five years. You've had like, um, seriously, you must have had uh, uh, 10 different captains. It's gone into double digits. Mm -hmm. So it, they have so much confidence in this system. And you could say uh, the conveyor belt of talent which is coming that, you know, they give everybody an opportunity and we need to learn over here the now the uh, argument they are going to make is that we have a t20 world cup happening in june but that doesn't matter you know you could get some players you could get uh, you know a rough diamond who you could actually send to the caribbean and you know this is the one format that if you have talent you should throw them you know into you got the call drawn too so i think that i hope they do this i don't see it happening i don't see the board being very bold about this but if they want to learn from previous mistakes they must give their bc and c team and you know their young talent and opportunity especially those who are performing well in franchise cricket yes asif uh, just recently we saw new zealand making satna the skipper in T20. Australia were going with Mitchell Marsh. So it's happening already. It's a tried and tested model. And recently you have seen that the entire Pakistan team was playing. All the key player uh, was playing in New Zealand. We lost 4-1 even. Mm -hmm. Shaheen Shah Afridi was a skipper. I'm not saying that remove your skipper. Mm -hmm. uh, we aren't bold, too much bold, you know, that mm -hmm. even we don't take uh, this kind of decision. there was a team director as well. A head coach, <laughs> team director, every, every, everything. <laughs> yeah, so I think that uh, uh, we guys are talking about India. What, ha what was happening? KL Rahul was the skipper. Rachin, uh, sorry, uh, Jadeja was the, skip, uh, mm -hmm. the skipper. And then uh, Pandya was the skipper also. So they, they brought three new skippers. And uh, in, in, in Pakistan, hardly we see that uh, even our senior players, they all play 
in the bilateral series. We don't give chances to the youngsters. Hasibullah got only one or two chances in New Zealand series. Azam Khan got three, four chances. Saim Ayub was there. But even then, we're relying on our key player. I mm -hmm. think it won't work in the future. Harris was rested. We Harris was that. rested. Yeah. That's, the, that's the point. And uh, now we have some uh, more performers in National T20. Uh, T20. Talk about Arif Yaqub. He's a proper leg spinner. Mm -hmm. We require a proper spinner. Shadab Khan isn't working. Nawaz isn't working. Um, Mera match winner isn't working. I think so. <laughs> Aapka yeah. match winner is also not working. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's the best time to give chances to the youngster who are performing well in franchise cricket, in national T20 and, and the domestic circuit. So I think then we'll be getting a good chance to give, uh, uh, to, to be coming up with new faces. But I think the indicator is important. Look, I, I'll be honest, I think for the past two years, giving them a chance has not been the problem. The consistency has been a problem. We're too quick to make a judgment. If, even if you remember the case of... Uh, Mohamed Ali was given a, uh, a run in the England uh, series, given uh, uh, bowling in the Pindi test on an absolutely cemented track, produced no results and then Pakistan thought maybe he's not the, the somebody that we want. Chance must be uh, with, you know, one or two year. Mm -hmm. It's not like one or two series, mm -hmm. to be very honest. And, you know, once again, I'll talk about the quacks. They're sitting on the <laughs> TV and they will talk about that. This guy is not performing well. And see that the one day they are praising a, to a player. On the other day, when if he's not performing well, they're the same guys who are sitting on the TV and they're just criticizing on his performance. So I think this is our criteria, short-term memory. We only talk about good sixes. We only talk about good fours. We don't talk about the proper cricketing shots. And that's why the players like Saim Ayub, you, uh, you, uh, you talk about what mm -hmm. happened with the other Ali. Mm -hmm. Everyone was telling him that go and hit for a six. That's it. He was a proper player. If you see his yeah. under-19 record, if you see his uh, under-16 record, he was a proper batter with the proper technique. What happened with the coaches, with the uh, people sitting on the TV and just asking for the go for the big it is, hits, this is what happened. Now, where is Hadar Ali? No one knows that where he is. Same thing happened with the players like Asif Ali. You know, only two, three sixes after four or five matches and we haven't groomed him. That's the problem, Ahmed. That's the problem that we don't work with our players on their grooming, on their mistakes. We just give them that this is the, uh, the, the ground and you can play. And if you don't uh, perform, we'll kick you mm -hmm. out. That's sir, sir, Heather, what should be the minimum criteria? Because this has been a long debate. Like I said, that the problem is not giving domestic performers a chance. It's about just playing them in a couple of games and then ignoring them completely. Uh, Ahmed, if you see that, why our players, young youngsters, if they have got the chances in the international cricket, they cannot perform or uh, they have not performed consistently. Uh, why? What is what is the major problem? Major problem is technique. I have done an interview some years ago of Sachin Tendulkar. I have asked him about the T20 cricket and he has said about that, that T20, T20 cricket is an integration of test cricket. If you are not successful in test cricket, then never you can be a good player in the T20 cricket. Our major problem is that our players, young youngsters, they are just working only to play t T20 cricket. They are not working on their technique. They are not working on their footwork. They are not working on their timing and uh, everything what is really needful for the uh, good cricket. That, that's a problem in our system. In our system only, like uh, uh, Heather Ali and other players, they have come so rapidly in the international cricket and they have been vanished. Why? Because their technique, they have not done work on their technique. That, that that's a problem. And in 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 Pakistan cricket uh, management, that they are working only the players who are in the PCB academy. But the PC PCB academy, they are uh, they are selecting the players from from the domestic cricket. If the in domestic cricket the player is not successful, how he can can be selected in the PCB academy and how uh, the uh, the coaches they can train him that is major problem in our system i have seen in england in england when a cricketer is 13 14 years old the trainers the coaches they are working on the youth i have seen by myself wasim asan raja uh, 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 great cricketer uh, let wasim raja he was the coach in england and he was coaching can you believe 10 and 11 years old youth cricketers but Sir that, Heather, I think is this is another problem, Sir Heather, that uh, even most of our, I think, uh, former cricketers prefer coaching 
outside Pakistan, not in Pakistan. It's an unfortunate reality. That's but I think you're absolutely right, and the argument does make sense as well. But, Sir Heather, thank you very much for joining us. Kiasif and Ali Mehdi, thank you very much to you gentlemen as well. That, of course, wraps up Sports Extra from me and the entire team. It's goodbye for now.